Hi there. I'm going to walk through a current project that I have going on, which is a stocking for my husband. Um, and I was stitching it and came across a few areas that I thought would be really good to share how I work through them. Um, and so I have a few sections kind of set up that I want to talk through how I approach doing the stocking. Uh, it's probably not the right way. I'm not um, the most traditional of, of stitchers, um, but it's just how I approach them. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, I'm going to talk about this kind of blue area here, which is just a basic um, section of this canvas. Um, but I want to talk about how I stitch larger areas. Um, and then I'm going to go through this little owl and talk about how I do some of the more detailed work and also how I order colors. And then I want to talk about um, freestyling or kind of going, um, getting creative with your canvas if you want to make any changes or tweaks to, to the colors that are there or if you just want to add a little complexity. Um, so the first thing is I had all of the yarn out except for the blue, of course. So let me just grab that. Is talking about how I do a larger section of, of work. And so this will be a good example of, you know, picking the right color, like knowing which color to use next. And then also how to maybe stitch a little faster than the, the typical stitching. I hope I could get this yarn through the needle. All right, then I'll knot it. So I'm going to start a little bit away from ultimately where I want to end up so I can secure this waist knot. So first off, how you determine the color, the right color to stitch, is what is the color of the intersection that you're crossing? So as you can see here, this is blue, so I know that that's got to be a blue stitch. Now I'm also going to talk about how I I stitch a little faster. You can only pr do this if you're not using a hoop and for this project I'm not because uh, I'm finding this is going a little better. So what you're going to do is you know the the typical stitch is you're going down and then you're going back up in the diagonal. But that's a lot of different movements of moving your hand from the front to the back of the canvas. So the easier way to do this is you are weaving your your needle in. So I know that my stitch needs to go down here and come back up here. So I'm shortening the time and the movements needed to make that stitch. And I don't have to keep moving my hand and constantly readjusting my grip on the canvas. So when I get to the waist knot, I'm just going to cut it off. And then keep going. And so now what you're supposed to do is when you get to the next row and you're, you're supposed to go from the top, the upper right, back down to the lower left. I find this harder to do that little weaving technique that I just talked about. So what I do, which is probably not appropriate, but is essentially doing the same thing. I actually turn my canvas around and, you know, this is a little more of an awkward grip because it's really in here. So I crumple up my canvas. Whoops. 
and then I'm able to do the same weaving technique. I am sure that one day I will master weaving from both directions, but I'm not at that place. So <laughs> this is what I do. I just kind of am constantly turning around and it does add extra motion, but I just think my stitches look better if I control them from this way. So whatever, it works. And I'll turn it back around to go to do this row from the other direction. And see what I just did there is I just went vertically down out of habit, but this stitch goes in a little more. So just need to readjust. Now we've come to, um, and as you can see, this is kind of sloping and I probably actually missed an intersection that was supposed to be blue here. So I'm just going to go back up and cover that. Quickly. And then I go down here. And this next one, I mean, I hand painted this canvas and I knew I was going to be doing it for my husband. So I probably didn't uh, like perfectly stitch count every stitch. This could be either. It's kind of split half white, half blue, but I'm just going to say, let's make it blue. And then, you know, if the curve is looking funky, you can always add a stitch to the end. Um, and really it's a judgment call of what looks best for you. So that is just quickly that section. Um, and talking about, you know, basic color changes, how I, how I stitch. Um, let me try this doing my weaving technique. No, it's not going to work. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my really haphazard kind of stitching. Wait, am I doing? No, I, 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 I'll just keep stitching until this thread is done. Ah. Oh, this is so awkward. My hand is... But this is most of my day stitching needlepoint projects. It doesn't look pretty getting it done, but it's going to look great at the end. It's going to look passable at the end. Here you can see something happened with my thread. So one is higher than the other. So what I'm just going to do is pull on both until they kind of nestle down same something's weird with my needle it's probably not perfectly even so just readjust that and I'm getting to the end of my thread and the end of my row which is great see I was about to split that thread which you don't really want to do so we adjust all right I'm gonna go down and then end the thread ah. of course I need to turn it a bit there 
cool. Okay, now I want to talk about detailed work and how I do that, which again, this is just how I do it. I'm sure it's not the quote unquote proper way to do the needle point. So what I've found is when you're stitching a lot of colorways, and you'll see this in things like pre-stitch chair cushions, the detail work is generally done first and then the background is filled in after. And that allows you to kind of, when you're doing the detail work, it does take a little more attention and brain power just to make sure you're stitching um, the right color. And then you can, as you saw, I, you can pretty quickly fill in a background if you're just using one color and not having to constantly change threads. So typically the detail work is done first. That said, this is stocking that has um, a lot of detail. It's basically all detail. Um, sometimes I reserve on the canvas if I'm doing it later at night or I've had a glass of wine or whatever. You can see I kind of work the background sections throughout. I'm not super religious about let's do all the detail first and then fill in the background. Um, but also sometimes I get bored while needle pointing and I want to do some detail work just to, to keep it, keep it exciting, I guess. Um, but, and, and, and you can see here the reverse is true. I did the background before doing the detail work. Um, I also found when you're switching a lot of colors, certain colors are tricky, are tricky, um, to pull up. So for example, red and black and white to me are have to be done in the right order because, and you can kind of see this, the little wool fibers that are spun together into threads, they have a little bit of a halo. So sometimes you can see them peppered in to certain colors and red and black tend to show up more than the others. So what I like to do here to better control it is if I'm working with a super light color, like a white, I do the white first, then I do the color, and then I do black. And that allows me to really, really control, I, I guess, the spread of, of that wool fiber um, and make sure that the right color looks like it's in the right place. And, it, you know, it's not going to be super noticeable, but it's just something that I think helps it look a little cleaner, a little crisper. So here I'm gonna do this white first. And these are little sections. So I'm gonna work the white. I mean, I shouldn't have just started in the middle. I just kind of stabbed it down wherever I wanted to go. Um, you know, the proper way is to go from top to bottom that looks kind of hard right like there's there's a lot of detail up there I kind of want to get started stitching this so I'm just gonna start from the bottom to the top whatever okay so then this is really going to be a challenge in figuring out where what the that intersection color is because that will determine the shape of this object and make sure that the features are really shown. And sometimes it's a toss up and you're like, I, I don't know what it's going to look like until later. If there's a doubt, I will leave the stitch unstitched. Um, especially if this white color is the background. So again, it should be left until the, it, it traditionally is left until the other stitches are done. I just think it's easier to do white beforehand. So it's not, 
you're not pulling up against darker colored threads and therefore spreading that wool fiber into, into your yarn. Because um, if they're, they're rubbing up against each other, it's gonna, it's getting some of the hair. So again, if there's a doubt, I'll just leave it and then come back and fill it in later. It's easier to do that than to unstitch. This probably should have been yellow, but we'll do it white. This looks like a nice little wing. And I'm kind of moving around imperfectly. And then I'm gonna be pretty lazy here. This is a short section. I'm not gonna waste much thread if I just it across instead of doing the whole turning thing. And just gonna work up this section. I'm gonna go over here. like it's gonna be tan so I'm gonna leave it I'm kind of imagining how much that wing needs um, of definition I missed a row because I left most of that row off for the taupe color that's there, the khaki color that's there. So I'm just going to go back and fill in where it should be white. Mm, that looks like the center intersection is colored taupe, but I don't know. Just going to do it. There's some white. I'm gonna leave this till later because I don't know if you can even see. It is a super thin little white strip and I don't know how these different colors are gonna play out. If it's going to look better to just have it be a khaki section. So I'm gonna leave that for later and then make a judgment call on it.
<laughs> I can't see the thread. Okay, so let's go in here and kind of start this section off. For these detailed section, you may want to resort back to the more labor intensive kind of poking through each side of the canvas um, and be very careful cutting the thread because you don't want to cut a stitch or your canvas off. I'm just going to not be precise because this lighter color is okay. It's not gonna be as visible if it gets tangled up in the in the white. And this is doing something a little weird, so I know I ultimately need to get this curve looking right, giving it some dimension. So I'm just going to add a few stitches here. I mm, don't know if that was the right choice. Fine. Um, then I'm like, where do I go next on this canvas? I'm going to go over to this wing. And this is going to be a good example of how I do thin lines. And I kind of just use a back stitch as if you were sewing and kind of just go down it diagonally wherever the color of that intersection indicates. And it's going to look weird. It looks a little odd, but the ultimate visual when it's all done is going to look great. But it definitely sometimes when you're stitching you're like this feels not quite right, um, especially when you're dealing with lines. You can see I've resorted to, let's call it the poke method, of just poking in and out because it's easier since I'm not covering large areas. So what I was about to do is do the same thing that I have been doing, going from the lower left to the upper right. But if I do that on this stitch, it's going to come out because I just stuck it through that hole. And that is, again, why I do this back stitch. So 
so that I don't have to worry about pulling out the thread on diagonal lines. And it's going to give better coverage on the back. All right, I'm nearing the end of this thread. Um, I'm also nearing the end of this tiny little section that I've done. So just do a few more stitches. And then I'll tie off. Okay, so how to tie off when there aren't so many of the same color row? I'm just gonna stick it through the white stitches. Now let's talk about the dark thread or black. This isn't black, this is gray, but let's pretend. And also filling in little detail work. Little tiny detail work. We're going to do the feet of this owl. Okay, so for this gray section, there are not many rows that I can actually use to do a waist knot and kind of encase it. So, it, and this is also true if you're not using a ton of thread, which is the case here. Like if you're going back and need to fill in a couple of stitches, I will not use the waste yarn method. I will just kind of do like a normal sewing situation and just pull it through the back so that the knot is, or pull it from the back to the front so the knot is hanging out on the back. I'm gonna undo that because what has happened is I did not clip the thread tail because I'm so used to doing waist knots and that thread is gonna get all tangled up in the back. So you do if you aren't using waist knot and you're just pulling it up through the back, you do want to clip that tail. Okay, so again, this is not proper. I'm not doing the proper lower left to upper right stitch but my main concern is following this outline so that I give shape to this detail work. And in this section, this is really kind of the last stitching. So it should look pretty fully formed now. And if you're seeing errors or things are looking weird, this is where you need to adjust because it's this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished, basically. I'm just going through, following the colors, the color matching. I'm getting to a tricky section. This is the little foot, the little claw. And what I don't want to happen is I want it to look like a like a claw. I don't want it to look like a blob of, of a foot. And if you look at the, the, the red like, or the intersection colors, it, it, this is all indicated as black or should be. I mean, again, I painted this for my husband, so it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do here is break the <laughs> diagonal stitch. Um, because I think it's just going to look better in the end. And, you know, this is a claw and it's supposed to be like a one here, one here, one here. When you're stitching just in this diagonal way, all of that detail can't be done exactly. So I'm just going to be very naughty and just break it. I'm going, that stitch goes the opposite direction of where it's supposed to go, but I'm just gonna do it because it's my stocking and the needlepoint police aren't coming for me, I don't think. And maybe I can't even get that third claw in. Fine. 
think this this looks okay or it looks okay for me so what you can see is here is an example of where I I didn't know how close I should cut it with that yellow but I'm gonna go back in and fill in with yellow here and here and that's gonna really give that shape so when I finish up this little gray section I will go back in with the yellow This is an example of where I'm like, what's happening here? Is there a stitch to be had? I'm not sure, even though it looks like it's indicated. And sometimes... I may overstitch a stitch. So it, a different color is there, or a secondary color is there. Like, this is bare. keep that white and I'm gonna do that way because that's supposed to be a little ear that's not sticking up as much as I may have originally intended so that white is gonna just add a little definition Here's an example, okay. So when I just poke through that stitch, which I probably shouldn't have done anyways, what's gonna happen is my needle is gonna pull up through
through that white stitch and the gray is just gonna spread through that stitch to make it look darker than it should. So I should, I should do it the proper way. And that's what happens when you start getting multiple colors going. There, now he has a little ear. And I will go back and do that. And that is all of the gray. Oh, I wish there was a little, I may, this is very naughty. Okay, so the ear here looks a little better than the ear here because there is no ear here. It's been like stitched over. So I'm gonna just go to this stitch where the ear would naturally extend. And just stitch over that white stitch. Could rip it out, but that would take forever because then I'd have to figure out where it is. No, it's just sorted. Great. Okay, so that concludes that. I'm gonna go back and this is where I decided to leave white sections. And then here, gonna go back and fill in all of that yellow. Because I stitched this the wrong way, it's gonna potentially be a little annoying in this section, but just make it work. All right, last thing is improvising on your campus. So what happened here is I was stitching along, you know, and I was like, I don't know if I love this acre snow. Is it looking too much like yellow snow? I don't know. So what I decided to do is add some white highlights, some drifts of super white snow throughout. And why I made the call originally to do the acre snow versus pure white, which is normally what this design has, is because I had this white owl and I wanted there to be some additional contrast going on in this section. So what I did here is I just kind of mirrored this blue snowdrift with white and I just freestyled it, but I wanna show a different way to do that. Um, if you also want to add a little extra color or um, changes to your canvas. Um, I'm finding a pen, which is where I've gone. So what you could do is mark on your canvas, which would make it way easier to follow where you want that drift to be. So I don't particularly want to ink up my antique fill table. So what I'm gonna do here is I also wanna add that same kind of accent or drift to um, this section. So it, it looks a little mirrored and I'm gonna do it a little deeper. So I'm gonna do it almost like, I don't know, a snow bank. So it's gonna follow through here and go down. I want it to go down into amidst these branches. So I'm just gonna take a pen. A Sharpie would be, would be better, but I'm just gonna use a pen. Actually, should use a sharpie so it doesn't bleed so when I'm blocking it it doesn't leak into the white thread that's ultimately gonna go there that would be bad. so again snowbank is gonna go into a drift um, so what I want to do is mark a snowbank let's say that goes kind of follows this line but I'm gonna get it to take up all the space in between these branches. So just kind of gonna freestyle here. And let's say, and I'm just gonna mark on the canvas. 
I'm gonna give it a little curve. There. That looks weird. I don't know if I like that. I'm gonna, well, it's fine. Maybe I'll make it go a little more this way. Yeah. And it's very faint. But it's a line I'll be able to follow. And I'll just ignore this one. Well, I'll just ignore it. So what will happen is I'll make this white and this a crew. And then, you know, I'll just add another white section here. And I'll curve it a little bit. And you can just do this while you're stitching if you don't want to mark up your canvas, but if you do, there you go. So I'll have snow banks and snow drifts and all the snow definition that I could ever need. Um, I also did this on this tree. Um, and this is hand painted, you know, a normal canvas or most of my canvases are just very, very monocolor, but with the hand painted, there are light variations where my brush pressure got lighter or the paint ran out on the tip of the brush. So you can kind of see that this isn't just a two color tree with just the green and the accent. There's also these lighter bits. So I'm probably going to actually use a lighter green and a darker green. I'm probably going to use three colors on this tree and just take advantage of what is kind of a natural highlight or happy accident on um, this tree painting that I did. I didn't do it on these trees above because they're supposed to be background. They're already small. I didn't feel like doing it.